almost obscured in the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean, are the tiny islands of Tarawa Atoll in Kiribati, one of the remotest countries in the world. Climate change is one of the most serious environmental problems threatening our planet, and no one is more worried about it than the people living on the small, scattered and isolated islands stretched across the southern Pacific Ocean. Many of the islands are low-lying coral atolls, barely above sea level. These could be the first victims of rising sea levels due to global warming. How long will it take for the lowest Pacific islands to disappear? Scientists cannot say with any certainty. Current scenarios predict sea levels increasing by up to half a metre by the end of this century. While sea level rise may be a gradual process, South Tarawa is already experiencing other effects of climate change. South Tarawa is actually a series of small islands connected by man-made causeways, very exposed to erosion by the sea. At high tide, waves often wash over the coast, eroding the shore and undermining the main road. It does not take much erosion to have a big impact. In many places, the islands are just a few tens of metres wide. Less obvious to the eye is the danger of salt water contaminating South Tarawa's fragile freshwater source. On small coral islands, the groundwater aquifer is a lens of fresh water floating on seawater. The lens is highly vulnerable to seawater infiltrating through the highly porous coral sediments and sands into the fresh water. The level of salinity of the source of South Tarawa's piped water supply is constantly monitored. The groundwater under South Tarawa has already been severely degraded by man-made pollution. The fragile atoll environment has been overwhelmed by a rapidly growing population. Close to 40,000 people, almost half the population of Kiribati, now live on South Tarawa without adequate sanitation, sewerage and waste disposal. Climate change is affecting the weather. Scientists believe that the massive quantities of greenhouse gases pumped into the atmosphere for the past hundred years have altered weather patterns faster than would have occurred naturally. The weather is becoming more unpredictable and extreme. Take, for example, the extraordinary weather events on the islands of Fiji in recent years. In 1997 and 98, the country of Fiji suffered its worst drought in a hundred years, causing widespread crop failures and reducing water supplies. Last year I have uh, harvested 100 tons of cane, and this year I don't think I'll harvest any plant because of this big drought. Tropical storms and cyclones, always a menace in the Pacific, appear to be getting more violent and destructive causing greater damage as infrastructure and populations concentrate increasingly in urban areas. On higher volcanic islands like Fiji's Viti Levu, tropical storms and cyclones accompanied by heavy rains unleash flash floods. With widespread deforestation on the slopes, there is nothing to stop vast quantities of soil from running off the land. Overflowing rivers choked with mud and waste flow to the sea and onto the fringing reef, damaging these fragile ecosystems which surround and protect the island. The Coral Coast, a popular tourist destination in southern Viti Levu, has suffered near fatal damage from runoff brought by storms and heavy rains. Now, a unique initiative by coastal communities, environmentalists and the tourist industry is trying to save the reef and protect water resources. This was called the Coral Coast of Fiji, now it's called the Dead Coral Coast. These are the most diverse systems in the world and they are the most sensitive systems in the world. This is the inner reef and it's in very bad shape. You can see it's got a little film of mud from the agricultural runoff. In the nearshore area, there were live corals up until very recently, and these corals have all been killed by the runoff, and there are just algal mats all over what used to be beautiful corals. The runoff water, laden with silt, agricultural fertilizers, animal and human waste, flows onto the nearshore reef. The nutrients feed the growth of algae, which smother and kill the corals. 
every village has pit latrines or septic tanks, flush toilets, but it's all going into the water table. Whatever comes in has to go out, and it's coming out right onto these reefs. Along the coast, situated among the seven villages of the Duvu Tikina, is the Shangri-La Fijian Resort, one of the oldest and biggest on Viti Levu. Resorts like this have a major impact on the fragile ecology of the coast. They use more fresh water and generate more wastewater than all the villages around them. <laughs> 